Hi, I just wanted to talk. I want to talk, I guess, really about RFK, uh, which is a phenomenon, something that's going on right now, uh, that RFK is even out there. Let me start with when I, um, when I was in, uh, when I was a kid, I woke up one morning, it was like, oh, I don't know, um, it must have been, what time, was it three in the morning or two in the morning? And uh, I turned on the television set because I was sleeping in the family room where the washer and dryer were. And uh, maybe it was just a washer. In any case, uh, uh, turned it on and there was just a panic s storm on the TV set, middle of the night. It was surreal. And uh, the guy was yelling, um, this guy was yelling, uh, you know, uh, get the gun! Get the gun! Was it Rayford Johnson? Get the gun! You know, and they were going through this whole thing, and I, I, I go, what the hell? You know, it's like I didn't know, you know, obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but I wasn't political at that age, um, whatever, however, however old I was. And um, as I got my parents up, they came, they looked at the TV set, uh, they kept running this scene over and over and over again about uh, get the gun, Rafer, and all this other kind of stuff, and it was uh, it was it was interesting. They they looked at it. I could tell that it was something was radically wrong, and there was a a, a strange sense of how is this happening? Believe it or not even for me at that age, how is this happening again? It seemed like an, a, an eon earlier that um, John F. Kennedy had been shot. Uh, and that was an issue, you know, back in grade school, I was in the first, first grade. We assumed that the nuns were lying to us at St. Augustine's. They were just trying to get a get us to be scared like they like to do, you know, with their stories. So we thought that they were going to just, that they were uh, just telling us about JFK to frighten us for some reason that we couldn't, you know, really even then we're going, well, this doesn't really make a lot of sense of why the nuns would do this particular number to us other than just terrorism. Um, but then as the day unfolded and you know, we heard that he was shot or he was wounded, and we didn't know. We thought about, you know, TV shows that we had seen, bullet holes. We didn't understand that, like, a, f and a fully, what, a, f a fourth or more of his entire head was literally removed from the gunshot that came, apparently, from the grassy knoll. Um, that gunshot that removed a quarter of his head did not, absolutely, absolutely did not come from the book depository. So then we had that go on, right? We went that and Lyndon Johnson became president. And, you know, my dad commented at different times. He said, oh, you know, Johnson is uh, Speaker of the House. And for Johnson to uh, <clears throat> become the vice president, I think he had something to do with it. What, you know, the reason he would have something to do with it is because, according to my dad, Speaker of the House is a far more powerful, active, and vital position Plus, Johnson didn't even like the Kennedys. So, <clears throat> do you like conspiracy theory? You know, I, I do. I don't know how you can avoid it. Uh, obviously, that's where the term conspiracy theory was coined, the whole JFK assassination. So, why am I talking about JFK if I'm thinking about RFK? <laughs> I don't know. Use your imagination. <laughs> well, you know, because... Anyway, let's go forward in time. Let's do a let's do a little remedial history. So uh, JFK was assassinated, and then uh, uh, Martin Luther King was assassinated, and um, and that and he was he was assassinated, and that has since come out, which nobody knows. I mean, a few people know, but not enough <clears throat> that. Um, James Earl Ray is off the hook for that one. They they let James Earl Ray go. I mean, the 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 James Earl, Earl Ray family and the um, uh, the King family got together and took this one to the court because they said that it you know the, the story reeks the the conventional storyline on it was was totally 
uh, made up. Well, and that's what happened. The, the, the story came out that it's, it was a, um, a conspiracy between this uh, Central Intelligence Agency, I suppose the FBI, but in Memphis, the local police department. All these people were implicated in the, the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. Well, that was in April. And then um, in June, June the 6th, 1968, Robert F. Kennedy Sr. was uh, led through the kitchen area, which is a route that he hadn't anticipated. And somebody told him that this is the way to go. And obviously, yeah, it's the way to go because there's guys down there with guns and they're gonna kill him. I'm laughing about it because um, we, you know, these moments go on and, and uh, because of the nature of what we are as people or sheeple, literally, okay, let's talk about that for just one second to put this in context. I've always thought is that, that we, human beings were rational, you know, homo, homo sapiens, that we were sapiens, that we knew things, the, you know, uh, that were, were conscious in some way. And I've, I've decided that we, a human is self-conscious, but doesn't really have nearly the creative or free thought potential that we thought we had. And so we are, you know, I, uh, in church, they would talk about <clears throat> the sheep, you know, Jesus leading his sheep. I'm afraid that the sheep thing is accurate, that uh, we have the, the, the trappings of consciousness, we have the trappings of free thought, but it, it doesn't seem to prove out that way. In these life situations that we go through, so now we have Martin Luther King being assassinated, we had uh, Thomas Merton, who uh, the first time he leaves the uh, the seminary, or the first day, yeah, the first time he leaves the Trappist monastery, and he goes to Bangkok for a, a conference. He turns on a fan or turns off a fan, came out of the shower and gets fried. Okay, so Thomas Merton is dead. Now, what do all these? What, you know, what one of these things is not like all of these things are exactly like something. They all share something. RFK Jr., uh, RF, Robert F. Kennedy Sr., John F. Kennedy, uh, Thomas Merton, and even um, Malcolm X. Not to mention, I forget the guy's name. What's his name? The, the, the Secretary General of the United Nations in 1962. He died in a plane crash. So you got the Secretary General of the United Nations. What is it? I want to call him Thor Hyde or all. It's, I know that's not his name, but uh, John Kennedy thought he was a saint, and uh, and and that that guy died, Kennedy died, uh, and all all of these assassinations. It's what they call a night of the long knives. It's clear, it's clear. Th these people don't just croak, you know. And then and then after that, almost as though to ice the cake, you know. We have the entire seventies of. Uh, uh, what are they called? The Zodiac Killer, and there's Charles Manson, and then there's um, uh, what was what was the other stuff that was going on? Um, uh, the, Speck, James Speck, all these murders, and um, not to mention the the Vietnam War, the moon landings. You know, all these things. I mean, it was just a, a storm of activity. And uh, well, and you know, and then the Beatles came in. What just a couple of months after uh, JFK Senior was assassinated. So uh, the British invasion. So I, it's a storm. Can you see the storm? I'm not trying to pull on this. You know, the the, the common terminology now that we're in a, a storm. You can feel it. It's a storm. Something's brewing. Something's going on. Think about it. Think about what happened in uh, 1945. Before I talk about RFK, who's still on my mind. <laughs> I've still got the junior on my mind. 
So we go all the way back to World War um, II. And that was the big war. You know, I mean, of course, we had the earlier big war, which was World War I. And then we have World War II. And that was where everything's going to change. You know, we have a kind of a, a you know, but, but before the end of the war, they had like devised this the Cold War animosity, this tension with Russia. Holy Toledo. You know, it's like Stalin was our ally, quote unquote ally, if you can have him as an ally, in World War II. And now we've got this Cold War thing and we the sheeple just kind of say, oh, there we go. It's the, the, the violent hearts of men. When are we going? When are we going to change? You know, when are we going to change? And 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 we just wonder why? Why do we keep being this way? Well, wait a second. Wait a second. Some, something's happening here. There's a there's a churning going on. It, it, we the sheeple understood that after all the patriotic movies with Jimmy Stewart and all this other kind of stuff, and all of the 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 brouhaha about the United States' role in in bringing peace and all that forget the fact that the Soviets lost 20 million plus or with some phenomenal number of people during that war. Uh, despite all of that, we go forward and we just say, uh, uh, we, we expected, right? Get my thought. We expected peace. The United Nations, they crank up. They crank up, crank up, crank up the United Nations, the land donated by um, the Rockefeller money, the Rockefeller family, just happened to have a piece of real estate in New York or wherever, uh, just happened to have enough spare change to put up a building. Great story, you know, the humanitarian gesture, the United Nations. Well, so we have the war to end all wars, and we have the, the now the Soviet bloc and the United States at loggerheads, and, and, this, the, so, and the, the United Nations. And constantly, constantly people praying for peace, praying for peace, praying for peace. Gentlemen may cry peace, peace, but there is no peace. The storm is actually here. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Already our brethren are in the field. I forget what that's from. I think it's Thomas Paine or somebody. Patrick Henry. Anyway, I memorized it in high school. So I'm still going forward to this moment. Why, why are we not getting it? Why, you know, it, you know, if I really settle into it, I'm going to be honest with you, when I really settle into the situation with we the sheeple, it makes me want to cry. It's, it's so painful to think that we have so much of something that looks like the style of thinking, the style of being able to connect dots, the style of being able to understand anything, that really all we do is eat stuff. We, do, we could think, but that's, that apparently is going to be another iteration, another level of humanity when humans actually become aware. When they actually begin to think, that's going to be another iteration. Because as we go through these stories, uh, no one, they're not connecting the dots. Johnson and Kennedy, the Warren report, it's very heavy, isn't it? Um, the Vietnam War acceleration, Kennedy was going to get out of the Vietnam War. We don't pay attention to these things. RFK Jr. is going to kill everybody in the, you know, no pun intended, in this, in this election thing, he's got to go. All right, I mean, I'm sorry, did I say junior? I mean, senior, uh, senior RFK, he's gonna cream everybody. So we're watching this, we're watching this, our enthusiasm is building again when the senior is, is doing his speeches. And uh, RFK Jr. lately has been talking about his, you know, my father, when he goes, you know, we went from with a funeral train and there were 20 million people blocking the tracks and a two and a half hour train ride took seven and a half hours. Um, you, I remember, and you may be too young to remember, but I was born in 55. And so I remember clearly that the upwelling of hearts, the upwelling of spirit at these times 
JFK with his, his uh, you know, physical fitness program that he was going to do, and everybody's getting in shape. And then there's uh, an RFK coming along with his, or Martin Luther King's speeches. Oh my gosh, they were so stirring. Perhaps you can just go back and review them and all that kind of stuff. Well, now these guys are Abraham, Martin, and John, Abraham Lincoln being, I guess, the first. Who knows what was going on in the Civil War and what that's about. Um, so let's go forward. Do you just understand what I'm saying? JFK comes along at a time and he was going to push this. He actually is having napkin exchanges, apparently, with Khrushchev. I've read about this before RFK Jr. was discussing this, the means that Khrushchev and uh, uh, JFK Sr. Is, are there discussing, because they couldn't get around their people. They couldn't get around their, their brass, you know, their military brass. Uh, want this tension. Why? The military brass are owned by corporate interests. Corporate interests have nothing to gain by peace. Corporate interests have nothing to gain from peace. And, and, and so, and you have uh, above corporate interests. So you've got the proverbial pyramid that's on the back of the dollar. Just check it out. Somewhere at the top of it, there's the eye of Sauron, supposedly the eye of God. But I'd say in the, in the case of our dollar bill, it's it's Sauron, and he's looking down all this and saying, uh, I will create these corporations, and these corporations will dominate the flows of money, and the, and the, the flows of money and the military-industrial complex will then tie up and dominate the military system, and the military system will then resist uh, peace because the military system is a form of business, and you know, all this kind of thing going forward. But we the sheeple, even though we have the ability, and this is the deal, we have the ability to understand those things. If you're into any sort of politics, this isn't news to anyone. It's not news. So why do we resist the, uh, the natural conclusions of these things in terms of the dominance of a military industrial complex, their relationship with uh, corporate entities, money, and those corporate entities having to do with f funding, and you go up, and whether we know who, who is who, the the eye of Sauron is really connected to some brain through an optic nerve. You know, we, you go back and you think, what brain is it connected to? Well, let's say we don't know. Let's not name names. Well, let's just mention that. Uh, modern capitalism formed at a certain time after the the protestant reformation or because of the protestant reformation and uh, certain families became vastly wealthy vastly wealthy because they were well placed and they were smart and they wanted to and we the sheeple all we want to do is you know eat our bread and watch our circuses it's not bad. I mean, it's a great thing. Humans are wonderful. But we the sheeple don't pay that much attention while there are other people who have it as the most fascinating hobby in the world to make money and to dominate other human beings. Now, we the sheeple think that that's a, a, a fair fight and that, ah, let the boys, let boys be boys. And now it's let boys be girls and let girls be boys and let boys fight girls and let girls fight boys. Whatever we have going now as an equivalent of let boys be boys, that's what the way we've always looked at this thing is uh, let them fight it out. It's, uh, what do they call it? Checks and balances. Like there's checks and balances. They've told us this. There's no, there's no checks and balances. <laughs> there's no checks and balances. It's literally the shark tank, you know, where there's a shark circling and they throw fish into the shark. There's no, there's no fight. The fish don't have a revolution. <laughs> Can you imagine that? That would be a movie. That would be a good Pixar movie. And, you know, I guess maybe it'd be stupid. Maybe it's called Finding Nemo. <laughs> but why do we do this? Why do we keep doing this? Why do we don't get past it? Okay. So let's go to the, the night of the long knives. It's a logical conclusion to get rid of the competition. I mean, 
uh, the oil interests, their name begins with an R, w way back in the day, he said, old man Rockefeller said, I'm not interested in competition. The, the goal of this is to eliminate the competition. Do you understand? Um, that's, so that's what we do. We eliminate the competition. I mean, not us. I don't eliminate the competition. I'm afraid of the competition because I'm a sheeple. I'm afraid of confronting the competition. But there are people that say, okay, in the road to wealth, what's the first thing we should do? Eliminate the competition. So I have, I can make anything, charge anything, do anything. It's just totally logical. And that's the, that's what we call competitive capitalism. <clears throat> Who can kill the competition first, I think, is really the nature of competitive capitalism. Sorry to the libertarians at this point. I mean, it's a good thought, but I don't know. Okay, so what on earth, Phil, what does this have to do with Robert F. Kennedy Jr.? Well, do you understand? Let's go forward just a little bit more in time. The, the, the wall. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Miss, Mr. Gorbachev, take down that wall, Ronald Reagan said, uh, like Moses parting the Red Sea. Lord, part that Red Sea. Mr. Gorbachev, take down that wall. And the wall just went boo, like that. And so that's what we had. The wall came down. And do you remember, ladies and germs, do you remember that we felt good? We were happy. Oh my gosh, here's peace. We the sheeple finally are going to get a nice pasture with good green grass that we can chew on all day long and kind of bump up against each other and eat a little bit of weird weed here and there and stick our head through the fence and chew. That's what we're looking for. No, 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 no. Uh, that happened in uh, 89 and promptly through the 90s, for some reason, Bill Clinton's getting involved in a bunch of military activity in the in Central Europe. And now you've got these countries that are starting to break out the Soviet bloc and there's all this genocide and crap going on over there. So once again, oh, let's pray for peace. All right, sheeple, get together, finger the beads or whatever your tradition is, and let's pray for peace. The Lord will bring us peace. Um, and and it's, it's poignant. It's a beautiful thing. I'm not I apologize if it sounds like I'm making fun of We the Sheeple, because We the Sheeple are great. Um, it, it would be helpful if We the Sheeple would look at each other, if we'd look at ourselves in a mirror and say, meh, 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 you know, like that, and just realize that's the true nature of our voice. Uh, and that very, very few see through it, and most of the ones who do see through it go, hey, I got an idea. Eliminate the competition. So once again, we're involved in upheavals and wars. And it was just a mere, a mere 12 years later. Let's, let's go a mere 10 years later when we had the, whatever it was, K2 thing with the, the click over. And it's almost like that was some sort of weird fire drill for disaster, the big, nothing happened. But then 2001, thank you very much. We were just starting to get, we were start, we, we had just mastered the Macarena. And um, we're, we're sort of like in the groove. You know, the president can play saxophone and now we've got uh, Al Gore. What? No, I, what happened to Al Gore? Uh, well, the hanging chad, so that was a problem. Yeah, well, you know, these things happen just like airplane crashes and stuff, hanging chads. These things happen. They just happen, we the sheeple say, reassure ourselves. These things happen. These things happen. You know, it's like me when I'm five years old. That's where we, that's where we go with this thing. Uh, self-soothing, self-calming techniques. Because now, uh, as my mother said on the telephone, Phil, the, 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 the towers just came down. I said, the towers come down. 
What, what do you mean the towers came down? They did. They just came all the way down. Okay. Anyway, I'm not even going to get into that one. You know, that, that's another one of those where I'm just astounded at we the sheeple. We're going, let's see now. Airplane fully loaded with jet fuel. And the fuel, you can see it. Hot fuel. Hot. You, you know how hot it is? Just imagine me pouring really, really hot oil. Hot. Hot grease. I mean... I mean jet grease that's so hot and I pour it over a, con a cinder block and just watch that block melt. I mean watch the block go down. Okay, wait a second. That's, that's not going to happen. It's just going to sit there. So what do you do? You, you, uh, you hit it. You hit it. You, you, you get a, like a, a, ha a hammer. You know, you put the grease on it and then you hit it or you hit it and then you put the grease on it. So you do that. You go to this the sheeple. We go through this physics class within ourselves. It's called the the little professor. In other words, the seven year old inside of us is trying to make sense out of the senseless, which is what we always do. That's what that's what kids do. Uh, when there's a lot of misbehavior in our world, we try to figure it out. So the the hot grease in the in the concrete block. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. The NIST. I think report came out and reassured us that yes, indeed, never happened before, but hot grease, um, jet fuel can melt steel beams and turn concrete into talcum powder. I'm not saying, you know, all I'm saying is please, sheeple, pay attention. Um, if you wake up one morning, and, and what used to be open pasture. And then the next day you see a, uh, a barbed wire fence with a couple of strands. Oh, that's not so bad, I can stick my head through. The next day you've got five strands. You go, well, now the weeds have to kind of grow through and I can nibble on them when they get there. And then it's a steel wall with barbed wire on the top slanted in towards me. Step by step by step by step by step by step. We the sheeple. Step by step by step. Now you say, well, we're, you know, believe it or not, I'm still going to get there. I am still going to get there. Just please live with me for a sec. Uh, so we're not paying attention. We don't pay attention. This is a, a frustrating that this is this is the real conspiracy problem I have it's not all the players and what they do I, I, I have zero problem with the eye of Sauron and the way it stacks on top of a pyramidal shape of blocks and uh, and the way that they interconnect and go down I have no trouble with any of that the problem I have is how come so many people have something that we can call the color of awareness it's like a shade of awareness but then when when these things happen, there's no outrage, there's no concern, there's no dot connecting. It's just my narrative understanding of who I am, what I am, and where I am. Today, Phil, yesterday you had five colors to work with. Hey, I can handle five colors. I'm a creative human being. <clears throat> a week later goes by, Phil, today you've got three colors to work with. Well, three colors, five colors color wheel I can handle it uh, today you've got nothing but gray hey gray that can be good black and white image in other words that's the way we function in this world until finally we're eating sawdust and we're just going hey wait a second I got diarrhea I got constipation this sawdust isn't working for me somebody put more beans in the sawdust will you somebody put more beans in the sawdust you know that's always funny i feel like all our complaints about internet and freedom and all this we might as well be in stalag 13 or whatever sitting there complaining about the amount of uh, sawdust that they're putting in the soup what you don't understand is that trying to kill you yes yes put in more sawdust so we're, uh, the point I want to make is, can you believe it? There is a point. <clears throat> we're feeling, it's kind of like this. 
feeling good, feeling fine, feeling happy, whoops, problem, boom, depression, coping, coping, we're crawling out of the hole, coping, flatline, 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 ah, feeling good, feeling good, going this, whoop, problem, <clears throat> coping, you know, crawling out of the hole, coping, 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 flatline, flatline, and, and we don't put this pattern together, this manic, depressive situation. I'm telling you, this isn't built into a human being. It's built into a manic, depressive human being or a bipolar human being. It's not built into us by and large. We like the flat line. We like a little bit of a rise and, and we have a little bit of a disappointment. But this idea about these, these climbing to the stars followed by the black hole of, of, of abject uh, depression that happens with these assassinations and these world events and these things that happen. So let me bring it forward. We've gone through this again and again and again. And is anybody, is anybody going to talk about it? Is anybody going to talk? Does anybody care? Does any, does, is there a sheeple out there that really, really wants to care that we've got another moment? What the hell is a Kennedy doing on the stage? And now they're taking pot shots at this guy. Holy cow, all he said was he wants the, 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 the shots to be tested in the same way of others. Go listen to him for a little bit. He's not, he's not saying, let's eliminate the, this certain medical procedure and go forward with this. You know, he's not saying anything like that. He's an incredibly rational human being. In fact, Maybe this is what we are. Maybe we're in a dark, uh, maybe it's a black hole of like finally seeing, you know, it's like the, the monkeys in 2001, A Space Odyssey, where they're feeling the black box. You know, we're uh, feeling a rational human being. Whoa, a rational human being. This is the first time in a long time. A real rational human being as a politician? How did that happen? You know, it's like, uh, I don't know what, a uh, Barbara Streisand, you find out that she's finally, she's like smarter than Einstein. You know, yeah, I mean, it's like, what, what, what's Barbara doing, doing uh, astrophysics? You know, it is, what's a rational human being doing in the body of a politician? I can hardly believe it. But we're here again. A Kennedy is on the stage again. He's got the focus of everyone everywhere. Why can't he? Why, do, why not? Because you can smell it. He's being honest. Anybody who says the guy is lying, they're lying. What does, it, what does this guy have to gain? What does he have to gain by um, drumming up falsities about the military industrial complex of drug uh, distribution? The pharmaceutical industry why on earth what possible benefit what's the word is it kibono who benefits for robert f kennedy jr here he is again one of those guys to be discussing the the underpinnings of just you know those little plastic bottles you got you know that you or the little things that you get you know what I mean he's like that's all he's talking about my health mostly the body takes care of that itself I mean we got a good immune system all this stuff is like what aren't we discussing um aren't we having a, a huge debate about gilding the lily you know I mean the lily itself is the human you know immune system no 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 that's right that's right we have to gild the lily because there are bacteria that are that are hell-bent on destroying all lilies. So we have to gild the lilies or plate the lilies somehow or, or plastic encase them. In other words, this is an analogy to my immune system being encased in a constant stream of something flowing through me to enhance my abilities. Oh, it's been set up beautifully. The whole thing has been set up beautifully for a long, long time. And it's always, you know, eliminate the competition, figure out how to dominate the market, 
have some sort of monopoly on everything. And the idea of monopoly climbs up the pyramid to the top, to the apex. So please pay attention. We have RFK Jr. is on, he's on stage. Do you understand that something is happening again? And how is this one going to go down? How is this happening? How is it unfolding? I'm not saying what is going to happen or what is happening. I guess I'm voicing my frustration at that our, the conversation that happens. I watched all of these uh, these things with news. What's it called? Uh, is it News Newsmax? Anyway, it's some news Newsweek news thing. Anyway, it's a new news show, and they had a town hall with RFK Jr. and the lady. I forget her name. Um, you, you just you can just see their brains and and then the people they had talking asking questions they're setting this guy up and he knows it he knows he's walking into this really a den of wolves and they're pretending to want they want the information no they're not they're setting him up they're looking for sound bites they're trying to get him to to play a certain game he has to be constantly constantly aware now, and why, why is this even happening? Because this is a game that his uncle or his father would have had to play. But they were simply taken out. They were simply taken out of the game. Isn't this the elephant in the room? The legacy? And the tendency of we the sheeple to not notice just in terms of us maintaining our peace and calm and our green grass um, so pay attention something's happening what I want to say is and this thing has been happening now for quite a while it, it's a it's a cycle of something happening note the pattern note the upsurgence, the, 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 the rise in, in, in the, you know, the emotional timber of the people, the crash and burn, the crawling out of the hole, and in, in, in the process of coping, the new thing that enters in, whether it's a Cold War relationship or the need to destroy third world countries someplace in the Middle East, or whether it has to do with finally, you know, maybe, like I just saw some stuff identifying you know obama uh president obama was a former president or former whatever he was uh, emperor obama was discussing um india why drag india into it well one reason is because india's got you know over a billion people and um a billion hungry people and a lot of them are smart as hell i mean they're you know so you've got an engine there in india and uh we we were looking at china to be the great inheritor of the planet in a sense and um i i don't know i mean i know it it's away from rfk jr but i would say that this is actually not away from it um china was being groomed to inherit the planet and that grooming had to do with a certain sort of a control grid that comes from the top down to the bottom and it would be focalized in a in a control system india is pure chaos i mean it's a miracle that anything happens over there i mean it's really kind of a wonderful thing when you're when you visit india it's a fantastic thing i'm sitting there writing with my indian pen that was created down who knows where new delhi or wherever they've made this thing bangalore a little plastic fountain you know uh, ballpoint pen and uh, writing along and boom that <laughs> the guts of the pen explodes and goes shooting over your shoulder wow i'm glad that pen guts didn't hit me in the eye uh their airlines are <laughs> similar uh but man oh man they get stuff done and uh it is impressive when you go to india it is impressive and it is sort of the opposite of China. India is like the opposite of China. India is truly 
not order out of chaos because man it is chaotic but I'm gonna say it's organic sense out of something that seems like chaos where uh, China is a, a regimented order out of something that was pounded into place and uh, so China has been groomed along those lines for a long time and now we have India and uh, any voices that are coming out uh, that are severely challenged as Mr. Robert F. Kennedy sir it is good to see you out there uh, it as he comes forward you can bet a dollar to a donut a dollar to a donut I never understood what that meant if uh, that what he's saying is challenging that status quo in the long run of who will inherit and how will that inheritance happen India is a wonderful place and um, as a model for human order I don't know I think it's you know from my point of view anyway it's sort of unsurpassed they've got gut-wrenching poverty they have horrible social situations some social challenges um, they've got a ton of smart people um, it's very very interesting and it and it's it is the poster child for diversity so uh, India is great plus not only that it's built on top of a still intact religious philosophical edifice um, whether it's math or metaphysics or gurus that you know I mean there's there's Brahmins out there doing math according to the Vedas in an amazing way that uh, you go well, how did he get that out of that crazy Veda thing I mean it's the usual thing anyway uh, obviously uh, India sounds like a totally different topic I'm saying that any any problems that you have with anybody whether you have problems with Donald Trump or you have problems with RFK jr. or we have uh, fatal flaws then emerge out of a an upstarts that arise out of the soup out of the thing like RFK jr. sir uh, coming out of the the dark the the back you know I mean he was the lawyer for for uh, water keepers for so long extremely uh, it's got great things to say about just about everything I'm not saying it's perfect you know but why do we always have to say this of course he's not perfect um, but the, the the freshness of what he says to me seems absolutely undeniable and to try to hang him up is like you know people I don't know what checking uh, I don't know what checking the, the the wisdom of ages for typos for for typographical errors it's it's a mixing of levels and it's a problem so um, I just want to notice that we have this once again a fresh upwelling of spirit a fresh look it's another optimistic Kennedy and um, You know what you have to do you you know what you have to do um, and that would be pray there's nothing else to do it's all the sheeple can do is get their their voices unified an upsurgence of ma ma towards their best intention for their paddock and hope and pray for the best uh, I'm delighted at these things and I I also you know it's it's it also has a frightening aspect to it because I know that these players that are involved in this thing are extremely serious people thank you just talking